everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little different. Um, if you're like me or like most wannabe cooks that I know there are things that you like dream about making or think about making but then just decide it's way too hard, it's not worth it and you just kind of give up on it and forget about it and I know I've done that a lot. There's a lot of things that once I actually try to make, I realize it's not really that hard. It just takes some time. And that's what this little mini series that we're starting today is all about. So my goal is to try out different things that I see on Pinterest or just on the internet in general that look really hard and time intensive and like a lot of work. And I'm gonna try to make them and let you know if it's worth it to make these or maybe just keep buying like pre-made stuff at the store or just not think about it at all. And today's is going to be a little different than some of the other ones I have planned. Um, I found this cake on Pinterest and I don't really make a lot of homemade cakes. I use box cakes as mixes a lot. Um, my grandma makes the most incredible cakes I've ever tasted and I come to find out she uses a box cake mix. I don't know what she does to make it taste so good other than the love she puts in it but they're literally the most amazing cakes I've ever made or ever tasted so I never make like cakes from scratch but I got to looking on Pinterest and I saw this picture of this cake. I'll insert it here. I had to make this cake like there was no way I wasn't letting this time of year pass without making this cake. And I'm literally following the instructions um, to a T that was posted on this blog. Um, I forget what it's called. I'll insert the name of the blog. And um, I'm literally following the recipe to a T. Now I am going to change the decorations a little just because um, of the type of icing I have. I don't think it'll really work to do the decorations, but the colors and Oh, this cake just inspired me. It's my dream to make a cake that looks this good. So anyway, that's what we're gonna be trying out today. And I'm gonna be trying out a few different like icing techniques um, to let you know if they're worth trying out at all. And so yeah, it's just gonna be a fun video. I hope you enjoy watching me struggle to do this and make a mess. Um, I am a very messy cooker, so this ought to be interesting. Um, I'm going to be, I'll probably be cleaning up a few times while I'm doing this. As my husband can tell you, whenever flour is involved, it's all over the kitchen. And it will be at the end of this video. Because the harder I try to be clean, the worse it gets. I don't know if any of y'all are like that. But whenever I don't try, it's actually not that messy. So something I, I have no clue why runs in my family I do know that so today I'm gonna get started I have my recipe taped up here if you follow me on Instagram you know a story from like last week I think I don't follow recipes and there's a reason usually I, I, I mess it up in some way um, like last time well okay technically it was my fault but they put part of the instructions in the description of one of the recipes I followed last week and it did not go well at all. Um, so I have read these instructions. I've got all my ingredients set out, I think. So I'm hoping this one goes better. We'll see. Who knows? Um, so anyway, I'm going to get started. So this is a pumpkin spice cake. And when I say pumpkin spice, I don't want you to think like pumpkin spice latte. The best way I can think of to describe this is a spice cake with pumpkin in it because you know we don't use like the pumpkin pie spice it doesn't have cloves in it and i thought that'd be really good i may add see here i go messing up the recipe kind of want to add cloves because it's not in there maybe i'll add a couple dashes of cloves do i even have cloves i may have cloves i think i have cloves because i made ginger snaps yeah okay so uh, we've got all my ingredients laid out it's a pumpkin cake i'm going to do cream cheese frosting and they have a recipe on here but i don't I, I've been making cream cheese frosting for years, so I'll just share with you really quickly an easy way to make that as we get on. But I'm going to start off by, in this bowl, combining all of my dry ingredients. So I'm going to start with a lot of flour. It says you're supposed to sift flour. I never sift flour. Three. Okay. So there's two and three quarter cups of flour, and then I'm going to add two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to add two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, a teaspoon of allspice, and y'all I had to buy allspice roughly. 
Mm, that smells like fall though and pumpkins. That has cloves. It smells clovey. Maybe that's why they didn't add cloves because it smells clovey. Maybe there's cloves and there's all spice, one spice, or multiple spices. I don't know. A teaspoon of nutmeg. And then, whoop, told y'all I'll make a mess. And then, I'll do one or two of those. Half a teaspoon of ginger. I'm just gonna whisk all of this together. Okay, dokie, so I've got my dry ingredients done, so now I'm gonna move on to the wet ingredients, and we're going to cream together a cup of butter, three quarters cup of brown sugar, and a cup of white sugar. So I've got two sticks of softened, room temperature, unsalted butter. I'm going to add three quarters cup of packed brown sugar and a cup of white sugar. So now I'm gonna put this on my stand mixer and let it cream together, and then we'll add three eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, a cup and a half, of canned pumpkin puree and a cup of milk. Okay, so the recipe calls for butter milk, but I'm not doing that because I don't have butter milk. And I'm that is that is the pamper chef measure all and it's amazing <laughs> and I'm gonna alternate adding in a quarter of the flour and then like a quarter of the milk I think you're supposed to do that but I'm gonna start with the milk <laughs> and I've put around a uh, wax paper in the bottom um, just make if you're gonna do that make sure none of the wax paper is exposed um, to like the oven because stuff will catch on fire and I learned that the hard way in my defense I was in like seventh grade so you know okay so I'm gonna divide this between my two cake pans and then we're gonna bake it at 350 until they're done I don't really know how long that is I didn't read that far in the recipe I only printed off the ingredients but this is a very, like, fluffy, it's not a very runny cake mix, which is good. That means it's easier to, like, I'm afraid. I should have divided this amongst three pans. Okay, it is finally time to make the icing. Um, I took the cakes out of the oven. They're cooling. They cooked for about 25 minutes, I think. I didn't really watch. Hi, Drew. Hey, Madison. Okay, so cakes are cooling, and we're going to make the frosting really quick. This is literally the easiest frosting ever. So I have two blocks of softened cream cheese and also two sticks of softened butter. And I have two pounds of powdered sugar. So I'm gonna beat the cream cheese and butter together, add in my two pounds of powdered sugar, and then pour in um, a couple splashes of vanilla. And that's all you have to do to make the frosting. It's super easy. I guess it would help if I plugged it in. throw it together you can also do that with a hand mixer you don't have to use a stand mixer um, but I want to try decorating this cake and trying to make it look semi professional and I don't want to do it exactly like the picture on the cake I don't have all of those colors and I want to try out making some flowers and not just using the same tip to make pumpkins so I have some leftover Italian buttercream from the last cake I made, and this is the best stuff. So I'm going to divide it out in two bowls, and I'm going to do some like corn flour, darker blue flowers, 
and then I'm going to do some like orangey yellow flowers and then I'm going to leave some white. There's my white and my blue and my yellow. So I'm going to try to get this to the color I want. Let me go get my orange. technical difficulties but I didn't I have to get this I had to get this done so I went ahead and did the crumb coat and I decided just to leave the cake in, in like a naked cake um, because we are going to do some pretty big decorations on the top and so I'm going to use this bowl as kind of like an outline for the wreath so I can get at least somewhat of a circular shape so I'm going to try to center it as best as possible and just kind of yeah that was bad center that works let it just sit that way I have like a circular outline to work with and then I've got um, brown that blue some yellow and some white frosting and I'm going to use my bigger tipped brown to kind of make the base and the bulk of my wreath and I've got it just in a sandwich bag but I'm just going to follow my circle which I'm very bad at but we're just going to keep it moving the good thing is, until it has a hole, an air bubble, no one's going to see this part of the cake because I'm about to cover it all up. Okay, so now I'm going to follow my outline and make little itty bitty stripes with this to mimic. Hello everyone, it is Madison from a few days later. Um, I just wanted to pop in here because my camera apparently stopped filming while I was making the wreath, but all I did was I used that itty bitty um, piping tip to just create a little grapevine um, 
stem looking pieces around the wreath and I just try to make it look as realistic as possible and so it wasn't perfectly straight if it messed up it messed up I was completely fine with that uh, but yeah that's all I did okay so I have these buttercream flowers I made and now I'm just going to place those onto my um, grapevine wreath for form in kind of like a pattern and I have chocolate leaves and chocolate pumpkins over here In retrospect, the leaves may be too big, but little pumpkins and little leaves. And I'm just going to add these on kind of like I would decorate a wreath. Okay, y'all, it's done. I literally just decorated it. I'm afraid to hold it up. I just decorated it like a wreath. I don't know if you can see it. I'll insert some pictures of it. But, um, yeah, just personally, I like decorating cakes. It's really fun. Um, not at, you know, 10 o'clock at night like it is right now, but um, I would say suggest that everyone gives it a go. It's just a way of being creative, and if you're not normally an artistic person, don't worry, you, you can do this because I can't do artistic stuff, but I like making cakes, and I think they usually turn out decent. Um, as for the flavor of the cake, I did taste some of the crumbs. It's so good. Highly recommend using the recipe. I will link the original blog post down below for this recipe. Um, but yeah, that was really fun creating a fall cake that looks nothing like the picture that inspired me. But I really like it. I'm happy with how it turned out. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video and enjoyed watching me make a mess. As you can see, I've got a lot of cleanup to do. Um, but if you did like it, uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Um, I hope y'all are having a great day, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.